Okay, what we're going to do today is take a look at a circular orbit of a satellite. Uh, and this satellite is going to be in orbit 200 kilometers above the surface of the Earth. And what I want to do is go through and work out two things for this satellite. I want to work out first the velocity at which the satellite is going to need to travel in order to remain in what we would say is a stable circular orbit around the Earth. And then I also want to work out the period or how long it's going to take this satellite to travel once around the Earth. All right, in order to solve for both velocity and period, we're gonna to need to take a closer look at exactly what it is that's keeping this satellite in orbit around the Earth. To get a better understanding of what's going on with this satellite in orbit around the Earth, I wanna back up to an experiment that Newton thought of back in his day. What Newton imagined was a cannon placed on top of a mountain. Now, if we were to fire a cannonball out of this cannon and we ignore air resistance, that cannonball would travel in an arc and land at the base of the mountain. If we were to fire this cannonball just a little bit faster, it would go a little bit farther. Or if we were to fire the cannonball even faster, it would go even farther and then land. And if we were to fire this cannonball fast enough, it would go far enough to where we'd actually have to consider the fact that the Earth is not flat. Sorry, internet, the Earth isn't flat, okay? Uh, so what would happen is this cannonball would start to go far enough where we would actually have to consider the curvature of the Earth. And Newton imagined that if we could fire a cannonball fast enough, and there was no air resistance on that cannonball, that cannonball would go all the way around the Earth. And that's exactly what's going on with a satellite here. All that's happened is this satellite is kind of like a cannonball. It's just a projectile. And it is falling toward the Earth. It's just that it's always going fast enough so that it never lands. As it falls towards the Earth, the curvature of the Earth causes this satellite to miss the Earth itself. And it never actually lands. It just remains in what we would say is a stable circular orbit. And the big consequence of this is that this satellite is not held up in space by anything. It is in free fall, just like the cannonball. The only force acting on this satellite is gravity pulling it inward toward the center of the Earth. Now realize Newton wasn't talking about artificial satellites. Those hadn't been invented and the technology to support them didn't exist yet. He was trying to explain what was keeping the moon in orbit around the Earth. Uh, and, and ultimately Newton and other people of his time, not just Newton, came up with this idea that ultimately the moon, just like this cannonball, is in a constant state of free fall toward the Earth. It simply keeps missing the Earth. And that's exactly what's going on with this artificial satellite or man-made satellite that we're dealing with here, just a little ways above the surface of the Earth. So we can apply some basic physics to this situation in order to solve for the velocity and period of this satellite. Realize this satellite is moving in a circle. Therefore, there's some force has to be acting centripetally on this satellite. Now, the only force which is acting on the satellite is gravity. So in this case, we are going to say that the force by gravity is the centripetal force. It is gravity that is acting as the centripetal force. So we can expand each of these terms. Looking at gravity, not as mg, but as Newton's law of universal gravitation, where g is the gravitational constant, this big M is going to be the mass of the Earth, and this other M is simply the mass of the satellite. The radius is going to be the distance between the center of the Earth and the satellite, and we'll get into that in a minute here. Now we're going to set this force by gravity equal to the centripetal force, since it is in fact gravity that is acting as the centripetal force. And we know centripetal force is mv squared over r. And the m we have to be a little bit careful with here. This m is in fact the mass of the satellite, not the mass of the Earth, because it's the satellite that's moving in a circle. The radius again is the distance between the center of the Earth and the satellite, because that is the radius of orbit here. This velocity, well, that's what we're trying to solve for right here, the velocity of the satellite. So, 
First, we'll see we get a little bit of cancellation here. The mass of the satellite is actually irrelevant, whether we're talking about a small man-made satellite or something large like the moon. The mass is irrelevant. The radius partially cancels out, and we're left with the velocity is the square root of g times the mass of the Earth over the radius of orbit. So in plugging in the numbers from this problem, g, the gravitational constant, is 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11th. The mass of the Earth is 5.97 times 10 to the 24th, and the radius of orbit is not 200 kilometers. That's simply how far the satellite is above the surface of the Earth. We have to add to these 200 kilometers the radius of the Earth itself. The radius of the Earth is 6,380 kilometers, or in meters, 6,380,000 meters. Remember, we always need to be dealing with things in terms of meters and kilograms and seconds. And so here we have the radius of the Earth plus 200 kilometers or 200,000 meters. So we find the velocity is 7,780 meters per second, uh, just under eight kilometers per second, which is extremely fast. But realize this is a completely possible velocity uh, which we can propel a satellite. Next, I want to take a look at the period of this satellite. Uh, the period is going to be based largely on the velocity which we already found and a little bit of geometry. I want you to realize period is simply the time it takes for a, a satellite to travel once around the Earth or to go through one full orbit. Well, that means that this satellite traveling at 7,780 meters per second is going to have to go around the entire circumference of this orbit circle. So circumference we know is two times pi times radius. Knowing the velocity and a distance or the circumference, we can solve for the period. Because remember, period or really time is going to be the distance traveled that's the circumference over the velocity or speed. So we find the period is 2 pi r over v, or to put numbers in it, for this case, we're going to have 2 pi times our total radius, not the 200 kilometers, but the total radius, 6380000 plus 200,000 over the velocity, which we already found. And we find the period of this satellite is 5,178 seconds. And this number doesn't mean a whole lot to people. Uh, so we can do a conversion here and say this is 1.44 hours, which means a little bit more to people. Or we could go even farther and say this is one hour and 26 minutes. So this satellite, in what we would say is low Earth orbit, it is close to the Earth, so it's low Earth orbit, uh, is taking roughly an hour and a half to go around the Earth. So in this problem, what we've done is we've taken a look at this satellite and realized that it's mechanically not any different than a cannonball, which has been fired horizontally. It's simply missing the Earth, which is why it keeps falling toward the Earth, but never actually landing. This has allowed us to solve for the velocity and the period of the satellite. And on that note, that's all for now.